George Carl has a new book out. I just started reading it. Furious George, my 40 years surviving divas, clueless GMs, and poor shot selection. So, George, how surprised were you at the pushback initially from some people on your comments? I was confused and, and surprised. I was, uh, you know, I'm, I knew there would be some things there, but uh, the piling on, how big it grew and how, how fast it kind of exploded was uh, was confusing. It was, um, at times, difficult. Um, when you say difficult, how difficult? Were you getting—I mean, listen, it probably helped your book sales, right? <laughs> well, you know, it's my first book, and, you know, I— you know, there's things in the book that I, I, I read, and I said, well, I know they're gonna, it's going to be tough for some people to read, but I wanted, I wanted to tell my stories. I wanted to, you know, talk about some things that I think coaches— coaches have a filter on all the time. Coaches have this ability they have to protect— a lot of things, and sometimes the truth doesn't come out. And and uh, you know, for me, I, I I'm I'm telling my feelings. I'm not they're 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 my truths, and that's necessarily the truth of the situation. But every day in the NBA, I mean, every every coach in the league is is big into trying to how to improve his team, how to get him better, how to get intense, how to how to bounce back, whatever whatever. And we we got to find ways, and we live in the world of frustration a lot. I'm not sure I'm furious anymore, but maybe 20 years ago I was furious. But there's no question the NBA is about, you know, handling, handling mistakes and handling, uh, you know, attitudes, ha handling uh, teammates and stuff like that. It's all a part of being an NBA coach. Yeah, I mean, it's the smallest locker room in pro sports, so one player who is erratic can blow up a locker room. In the NFL, half the guys go into meeting rooms without half the team because they're offensive guys and they don't hang out with defensive guys. In the NBA, one bad apple can ruin an entire locker room and make your life miserable. You made comments about fatherless players, and that landed to a lot of people. That's what really got a lot of pushback. When you look at that now, do you think, oh, I went too hard on that? Are you okay with that? No, I've, uh, I've numerous times already, I, I think I said it the wrong way. Uh, I think the whole situation comes out is we have a lot of young players in our league, a lot of young players with a lot of money. And, and how they handle their first two, three, four years are really important to them. And as a coach, you want to help those people. You want to direct those people. And, and you, know, I would, you know, what's funny about the book, the book has a lot of fatherhood in it from my standpoint. My son and I had a difficult time because of me being a coach and being away from home a lot. And our cancers together brought us back together in a lot of ways. And then I had the blessing to be under Coach Smith at Carolina, who was like a second father to not only me, but almost every player at the University of North Carolina. And my father was very strong and very supportive. So, I mean, I, th I think it's, I mean, this journey of an NBA player, I know everybody thinks it's a, an easy journey, but it isn't. It's a difficult journey for players. And, and I think, you know, as coaches, we're trying to figure out how to help them. You know, you touched on something that I have talked about with numerous NBA people for the year, through the years, and not necessarily on the air. But I believe there's performance enhancing drugs in the NBA, and I think it has been a problem in the past. And I'm not talking about debilitating drugs. I'm talking about PEDs. Um, there is some testing now, which obviously can help it. But have you felt, I felt for years, and I almost understood with the brutal back-to-back -back schedule, winter traveling, hotels at 3 in the morning, get up, shoot around. Do you think it's still a widespread issue? I don't think it's a big issue, but I, I, I'm like you. I'm a little bit of a conspiracist, and I watched some of these great athletes last. And, and you know, go, going through cancer and being 65 years of age, I know about HGH, and I know about some other, other things that can help your body recover, help your body stay strong, help your body be energized and be picked up. And I, I have no idea of what player I'm talking about. My general intelligence says with 500 players in the NBA, there's probably something going on. Yeah. Um, years ago, Bob Witted, I asked him about you and I said, what do you think of George? And he said, I think he's a heck of a coach. I said, he goes, he's not easy. George is not easy. There's always, there's conflict. Is it fair to say that through the years, you were um, not always the easiest guy to play for, that you had a strong point of view and it rubbed people the wrong way sometimes? 
Uh, I, I mean, I don't think I'm as combative as people report it to be, but I am a person that believes that t tell what's going on and, and try to get work it out and try to get it better. Uh, and I can be strong. I mean, I can be strong in my correction and my criticism. Uh, at, se at the same time, I think my coaching staffs over the years in general have been very positive to players. But, you know, the game, when you coach a guy for 500 games, like I've coached Gary Payton and coach guys even for 100, 200 games, they're not going to like the coach. And, you know, I learned very early in my career that trying to be liked is not a part of being a head coach in the NBA. You know, respect, you want, the, you want your team to have an attitude that respects the game of basketball, respects the comp competitive spirit of the game. And they don't always have to get along. And because of the situation of win-lose, you're not always going to get along. There are going to be moments where you have attitudes and, and distractions from, from everybody, and the head coach can be that guy sometimes too. Uh, finally, George has a new book out, Furious George, My 40 Years Surviving Divas, Clueless GMs, and Poor Shot Selection. I'm about a third through it. It's, it's full of a lot of good stories. I initially am a fan of LeBron and Kevin Durant and player mobility. I've been mobile in my life. Why can't an NBA player? But this year has been very unique, George, where it feels like a two- to a three-team league. Nobody's beaten LeBron in Cleveland, and Golden State's getting to the Western Conference Final. Whether they beat San Antonio or Houston, I don't know. I am for mobility for me, so I'm for mobility for players. But do you believe it has now become a problem where players are controlling movement and they're conjoining here on teams and the league is simply too top-heavy? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I agree with it being top heavy. This year, I think there's a big space between the top two and maybe the top three teams, given San Antonio the benefit of doubt that they'll improve and get better and maybe get into the category. What I see in the league today is the game has grown so fast. It is so, it's getting so big. You know, in the 80s, we weren't a multi-billion dollar business. In, in 25 years, we're, we're a multi-million dollar business. And I think it's grown so fast, and sometimes we don't look at the game. We don't look at, you know, we just look at maybe the, 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 the spreadsheets. And I think sometimes we need a conscious of how the game is. Is it getting better? Is it improving? I mean, the ratings doesn't tell the truth all the time. Just because it's being watched at a high, high level, it's, it's very tight with the young, young people in the world. The whole thing comes down to, is the game improving? I think our players are getting extremely talented and improving, but there is a parity in the league that I think is concerning. Yeah, I, know I, I think this year more than any in my life, and I've been watching the NBA since 1972, three from my little bedroom black and white TV, and I don't remember a year where I felt like <laughs> wake me during the finals, and I think the finals will be great. The book is called Furious, George. George Carl, a friend, a guy I've known for a long time. Continued success, George. Thank you.